Change. Change. You can decide. When you go home, you can decide to do a budget today. What most people don't realize, especially those that are broke, is that you can decide to change your financial state at any time. Now, I'm not saying it will be easy, but it will be worth it, and it's totally doable if you start planning for tomorrow instead of living for today, as Dave Ramsey said. People who have wealth starting from nothing, which is the majority of people who have wealth, they started from nothing, when interviewed and they asked them their decision-making paradigm, they said, I make decisions like career decisions or purchase decisions or investment decisions, not based on what will make me feel good Friday. Well, today you're gonna to make the decision to stop being broke and to change your financial life for the better. And you'll start by avoiding all 31 of these items that broke people waste money on. Number one, expensive dates. No, I'm not talking about the dates you bake into your cake. When I say expensive dates, I mean the ones you go out on with a prospective lover or your current partner. While it's nice to get all dressed up from time to time, dates can get incredibly expensive in a hurry. From the cost of dining, transportation, and drinks, you can easily blow a couple hundred dollars on a simple night out. If you're struggling to get ahead, this is an expense you absolutely have to moderate. For date nights, go for a walk, cook a meal at home, and save yourself the money while still having just as good of a time. Number two, snap purchases. You're in line at Walmart and a pack of gum catches a corner of your eye. You don't need gum, but it's there so you figure you might as well. These snap or impulse purchases don't seem like a big deal in the moment, but they sure add up over time. A recent survey showed that consumers in the US were spending upwards of $300 a month on impulse buys. That's enough money to make significant headway in your retirement savings efforts that many people are throwing away over a pack of gum that's only going to rot their teeth. Number three late fees. Do you want an easy way to lose money? Just throw away your money to late fees like many Americans. Americans these days are paying just under $600 a year in late fees, mostly relating to missed bills. That's kind of embarrassing if you ask me, but the good news is this money issue has a quick fix. Just set up automatic payments with your service provider so that your credit card gets billed monthly. Then have your credit card clear itself out against your bank account every couple of weeks. This way, you'll avoid missing bill payments and have your TV or lights go off while saving you hundreds of dollars in the process. Number four, outdoor coffees. Who doesn't love picking up a cup of Starbucks on the way to work? I know I do. Even Dave Ramsey, the man who has helped millions of people improve their finances, loves a good cup of joe. However, for the average person looking to get ahead, indulging in outdoor coffees isn't going to help them achieve their financial goals. When you consider a drip coffee at Starbucks is $3 and a cup made at home costs a mere $0.10, cents, you can see how much extra you're paying for the same caffeinated drink. Sure, a dollar here or there doesn't seem like a big deal, but those little expenses add up, especially based on how often many people are grabbing their coffees on the go. Number 5. Eating Out we all love eating out at restaurants from time to time, that is, until the bill comes and we have to open up our wallets. There's no doubting the fact that eating out can be expensive, and as Dave Ramsey says, it's cheaper to make a meal at home than it is at any restaurant. This is entirely true, and typically eating at home is also healthier too. You know what is going into your meal and can even turn your new cooking habit into a wonderful skill you can enjoy over time. Number six, credit card debt. If you didn't already know how Dave Ramsey feels about credit card debt, then here's a little preview. Uh, you know what? The credit card is the cigarette of the financial world. This is a rather aggressive comparison, but in many respects, he's right. Many people are addicted to the use of their credit cards the same way a smoker can't put down his butt. They spend and spend knowing that what they're doing to themselves is harmful, but they simply can't stop. This is why Dave tells people to pay with cash instead. It's a much healthier way to spend. You're only giving up what you have and nothing more. This is much better than spending others' money and having to deal with the consequences down the road. And if you agree, let me know by hitting that like button below. Number seven, unnecessary consumables. The first thing I see when I look at my girlfriend's work desk are empty bottles of water. Not only are bottles of water desk pollutants, but they're also unnecessary consumables that can be avoided in order to save money. Right now, the average American spends about $100 a year on bottled water, and while it may not sound like much, it is when you consider that you can replace that cost with one reusable bottle and save that money into perpetuity. 
Number eight, video games. This one may ruffle some feathers, but hear me out. Video games can be a ton of fun and a great way to unwind. But here's the deal, they can also suck you into a never ending money pit. First off, those game consoles and gaming PCs don't come cheap. And let's not forget the cost of games themselves. With new releases priced like a fancy dinner, your wallet might be crying faster than your character responds. Then there's the addictive nature of gaming. It's easy to get sucked into endless hours of gameplay neglecting other important aspects of life. Before you know it, your bank account is drained and you're no closer to achieving real life goals. Dave Ramsey is all about getting real results. He wants his followers to live in reality and make actual life progress, which you can't do if you're spending all your time and money on video games. Number nine, unnecessary insurance. Being overinsured or having the wrong types of insurance is like throwing your money into a black hole. I mean it. Now, insurance is important, no doubt about it, but unnecessary insurance? That's like purchasing a parachute for a stroll in the park. Here's the deal. Insurance companies are masters at making you feel like you need coverage for every little thing. They'll try to convince you that insuring your smartphone or your pet's toenails is crucial, but come on, do you really need that? Before you dive headfirst into every insurance policy out there, take a step back and assess if it's truly necessary. Focus on the essential coverage like health insurance or car insurance and skip the extras that just drain your bank account. Number 10, avoidable taxes. Avoiding taxes is an easy way to start saving more money, but before you think I'm advocating for illegal tax evasion, let me set the record straight. I'm talking about employing smart legal strategies that help you keep more of your hard earned cash in your own pocket and have less going into the hands of the government. Here's the deal, taxes are a buzzkill draining your income faster than you can say IRS. Fortunately, by understanding the tax system and taking advantage of legitimate deductions and credits, you can maximize your savings and stash more cash. From deducting business expenses to contributing to retirement accounts, there are plenty of tax breaks available if you know where to look. Number 11, buying expensive cars. Despite being a multimillionaire, Dave Ramsey has a very frugal perspective on car buying. Brand. Okay. You can get a great old Camry or a great old uh, uh, Ford Taurus or a Cavalier or uh, something like that. These are just little land yachts, right? Maybe, maybe an old Honda uh -huh. Accord, that kind of a thing, and something, and have a mechanic check it. Are you single? Similar to most financial gurus, Dave is adamant that your car is the tool for getting from point A to point B, and when you see it that way, you're going to end up saving yourself a ton of money over the course of your life. For instance, if right now you bought a used car for $30,000, your payment would be around $500 a month. For a new car, not even one that's overly fancy, you'd be paying just over $700 instead. That's a $200 difference for the same utility which you can save and invest instead. If you're more interested in getting rich than driving a fancy car, let me know by hitting the like button below. Number 12, brand name clothing. Once you hit a certain age, no one really cares about the clothes you're wearing as long as they're clean. When you think about it, all clothes serve the same purpose, whether you spend $300 on them or $30. Sure, that $300 shirt may get you a compliment here and there, but that's a hefty price to pay for other people's attention, especially because a compliment is based on what you own and not who you are. Number 13, excessive phone plans. It's easy to sign up for a phone plan and automatically jump for the one with the most data, minutes, and extra features. I know for myself personally, I've been guilty of doing this in the past. I would sign up for a 50 gig plan only to realize that it was only using a fraction of it while still paying full tilt. As Dave Ramsey says, paying for your phone through a contract plan is still a debt, so clearing it as quickly as possible is key to being financially free. In other words, Treat it as any other debt and pay it down on time and in full every single month. Number 14, party costs. Partying is fun, but it can also come with a hefty cost, especially when alcohol is involved. When drinks start flowing, not only is this a drain on your wallet, but on your mental capacity as well. For instance, it costs roughly $80 to go out on a night out, and if you ask me, those numbers are conservative. Many people go out every weekend, so that's over $300 just in party expenses every single month. But what about bodily drawbacks? It's been shown that even moderate amounts of drinking can reduce your mental cognition, making you broke and slow all at the same time. If you're tired of being broke, giving up a few drinks is a wise financial
special move. Number 15, addictions. Fortunately, the rate of tobacco use amongst Americans has dropped to 11% over the last few years. If you're still a part of this shrinking population, then seeking help to quit is highly recommended, as tobacco use is easily one of the most expensive habits you can have. It's not uncommon for a person to spend hundreds of dollars a month on cigarettes to meet their addiction needs. Not only is this habit eroding your health, but robbing you of financial success. Don't believe me? If you invested your $200 cigarette fund into an investment that paid you 7% for 30 years, you'd end up with almost $250,000 in three decades time. Not to mention, you'd also likely avoid a ton of undesirable health consequences, making you richer and healthier. So if your hard earned cash is currently being spent on addictions, do your best to cut them out as soon as possible. Number 16, inflation. Picture this, you stash your money in a savings account thinking you're being responsible and all, but guess what? Inflation comes along like a sneaky little thief, silently robbing the value of your money over time. Dave Ramsey hates when people waste money, like on credit card debt for example, and inflation is no different. Inflation is like a monster that makes prices go up and erodes the purchasing power of your precious dollars. While your money collects dust in the bank, its value diminishes as the cost of goods and services keeps rising. So that sweet vacation or shiny gadget you've been saving for, it's going to cost you more down the line. Basically what I'm saying is that you shouldn't let your money laze around losing its value. Be a smart spender, a clever investor, and stay one step ahead by avoiding the cost of inflation by keeping the majority of your money out of low interest bank accounts. Number 17, fast fashion. With fast fashion, two things go quickly, your money and the fashion itself. If you're unfamiliar, fast fashion are trendy clothes that are popular one day and gone the next and often they are of low quality, meaning that they need to be replaced one way or another. If you're succumbing to clothing trends or buying cheap fashion, then you're setting yourself up for ongoing spending. Instead, find pieces of clothing that are timeless, buy quality, and enjoy them for years to come. Number 18, extended warranties. Companies love preying on your fear that the items you buy are gonna fail, and they do this by selling you extended warranties. Sure, they can pay off from time to time, but often they aren't needed, and you end up paying much more than you have to. Plus, many products come with manufacturer warranties already, so the items you're buying will still have some coverage. If you want an easy way to determine if you should buy an extended warranty, simply equate the average cost of repair against the cost of insurance, and whichever is higher is a one to protect against. Number 19, unused subscriptions. Subscriptions are a very sneaky type of expense, and as you know, Dave Ramsey hates when people waste their money. What's the issue with subscriptions? First off, their low prices make them appear to be harmless. It's the $10 you pay every month for services like Netflix and Amazon. However, because of this fact, they tend to be easy to accumulate over time. It's $10 here and $10 there, and before you know it, you have $200 worth of monthly subscriptions, which are impairing your ability to save. The second issue is that some of these subscriptions were signed up for weren't intended to be bought in the first place. We've all been in the situation where we sign up for a free trial, forget to cancel, and realize three months down the line that we've been paying for a service we haven't even been using. But perhaps the biggest issue is canceling them once we realize the costs we're incurring. From trying to remember our passwords to finding the cancellation button, opting out of these costs is often easier said than done. Therefore, the more you think through those free trials and small purchases, the less work it will be to keep your expenses low. And if you feel inclined to subscribe to something, make sure it's this channel by hitting the big red button below. Number 20, unassigned money. Dave Ramsey, when you do a written budget on paper, on purpose, every dollar has an assignment before the month begins. He's a huge advocate of budgeting and for good reason. Without a budget, it's incredibly easy to waste money. As he mentions, you need to give your money a purpose. Similar to how we humans need a purpose, so does our money. And the best way to use our money wisely is to plan for how it will be used. Some of your monthly income should go towards needs like food and shelter. Some should go towards wants, and finally a fair percentage should also go towards savings. However, making sure all these buckets are addressed will only be possible if you're budgeting before the month begins. Number 21, cable TV. I know what you're thinking, who still is cable these days? And I thought the same thing, that is, until I did a bit of research. As recently as this year, 48% of Americans claim to still have a cable or satellite subscription. Now, if you're only paying for cable, then it's not such a big deal, but most people aren't. On top of cable, they're also having numerous streaming subscriptions they pay for, and with cable alone costing the average person around $83 a month, it's not hard to estimate that most people are paying over $100 just for TV. Therefore, if you want to stop wasting money on TV, 
Audit what you're actually watching and assess which services should stay and which should go. Number 22, non-generic medications. When it comes to our health, we should be making the wisest decisions possible. Unfortunately, many people equate the price of their medications to the efficacy, and this simply isn't the truth. Most people pay for brand name meds, which are commonly 30 to 40% higher in price compared to their generic counterparts. As Dave Ramsey says, live on rice and beans as a means to get ahead, and not wasting money paying for brand name medication is a way to embody his rice and bean mantra. Number 23, car leasing. If you haven't heard Dave Ramsey's opinion on leasing cars, then you need to listen to this. Car leasing is the most expensive way on the planet to drive a vehicle. Leasing your car is the worst car financial deal out there. Leasing a car might seem like a sweet deal at first glance, but let me tell you, it's road paved with regrets. Seriously, steer clear of this leasing nightmare. Here's why. First off, leasing is like throwing your hard-earned money into a bottomless pit. You're basically renting a car, but instead of giving you something to show for all your monthly payments, you end up empty-handed when the lease term expires. It's like paying for a vacation rental and returning home with nothing but a sunburn, and don't be fooled by those low monthly payments. Sure, they may look tempting, but read the fine print. Leases come with all sorts of hidden fees and mileage restrictions. Exceed your allotted mileage and you'll be hit with hefty penalties. Not to mention, you're expected to return the car in pristine condition. A tiny scratch or ding could cost you a fortune. But wait, it gets worse. Leasing locks you into a long-term commitment. Want to end the lease early? Prepare to fork over a mountain of cash to break free from the shackles. Plus, you're stuck with limited customization options. Forget about making the car truly yours. So unless you enjoy flushing money down the drain, stay away from leasing. It's a bad deal wrapped in shiny paper. Save your sanity and buy a car outright or opt for a reliable used one. Trust me, your bank account will thank you and you'll avoid the lease induced headaches. Number 24, unused gym equipment. We've all been there. You get all pumped up after watching an infomercial promising rock hard abs and buns of steel in just 10 minutes a day. So you swipe your credit card and bring home that shiny piece of metal that promises to transform your life. But guess what? It ends up collecting dust in the corner of your room, serving as a clothes rack rather than a ticket to fitness glory. If you want to use your money wisely, consider this. Most people don't have the time or the motivation to stick to a rigorous exercise routine. So before you splurge on that experience, expensive equipment, think twice. Save your dough and hit the local gym instead. Trust me, your wallet will thank you, and you won't be left with a treadmill turned coat rack reminder of your fitness aspirations. Number 25, the wrong partner. People don't always pick the right partner, and when they don't, the financial consequences can be severe. Sometimes, a partner will have bad money habits that will rub off on you and impair your ability to get ahead. Sometimes, their intentions are more malicious. What do we call these types of people, Dave? Right. She's a gold digger. Um, it, we're well aware his birthday suit needs ironing. Okay, I mean this is this is not an attraction. This is a money thing. Mm. It's a money play, and um, so you know he's being taken advantage of. That's why you should ensure that whoever you decide to build a relationship with has not only good money habits, but the right intentions as well. They should want you for you, not any financial means you may happen to have. Number 26, banking fees. You don't have to look very hard to find out just how much Dave Ramsey despises banks. Banks are on edge. Dave, I've got a Kleenex if you I need a, one. I have a tear. <laughs> banks, <laughs> bank, banks are on edge. We're in the 21st century, people. It's the era of online banking and digital transactions. So why on earth are banks still charging us outrageous fees for basic services? Seriously, that's like paying extra for premium air package when you can breathe for free. And let's not forget about those overdraft fees that make your bank account cry. You slip up by a few cents and bam, you're slapped with a fee that feels like a sucker punch to your wallet. The good news is that there are plenty of fee-free or low-fee banking options out there if you do your homework. Given that you shouldn't be leaving too much money in the bank beyond your emergency fund, using a bank as a low-cost safe haven should be the goal of any account you plan on opening, besides avoiding fees, of course. Number 27, getting the wrong education. If you, Whether you're the student that's watching us maybe on YouTube and you're thinking of going into college in the future, you're 17, 18, 16, 19, whatever, in that age group, or whether you're the parent. The thing that Anthony and I have seen where the largest mistakes happen, I mentioned to her earlier, it was her mom didn't know anything about 
higher education back. While the value of a degree has been declining for years, getting the right one can still yield great financial benefits. The issue is that the wrong degree not only leaves you without a skill set you can use to find a lucrative job, but likely with mounting student debt as well. That's why before you pursue more education, you want to identify future job prospects and salary ranges to ensure that the investment you're about to make will be a profitable one. Number 28, home improvements. We've all seen those fancy home makeover shows that make us drool over granite countertops and spa-like bathrooms. But here's the deal. Not all improvements add value to your home. You might pour a ton of cash into remodeling your kitchen, only to find out that potential buyers don't care about your fancy backsplash or hood fan. And let's not forget about the never-ending cycle of maintenance and repairs. You fix one thing and something else breaks. It's like playing a game of whack-a-mole with your wallet. Plus, home trends change fast. That quirky wallpaper or paint color you just have to have, yeah. It may be so last season in no time. Now, I'm not saying don't take care of your home, but be smart about it. Focus on necessary repairs and maintenance and think twice before diving into costly renovations that may not give you a good return on investment. After all, there are better ways to spend your hard-earned money than chasing the latest home improvement trends. Number 29, vanity costs. One of Dave Ramsey's most famous quotes is, we buy things we don't need with money we don't have to impress people we don't like. And he's completely right. In the era of social media, we feel more compelled than ever to keep up with our peers. Unfortunately, as we try to keep up with others' lifestyles, our debt loads tend to keep up as well, and this isn't a good thing. It's only once you decide that you'd rather be rich than look rich that you can start to get ahead. As Dave says, you have to live like no one else, so later you can live like no one else. And this means ignoring the desire to look rich until your bank account matches the lifestyle you want to live. Number 30, lottery tickets. Probably one of the biggest wastes of money that I've shared so far and that Dave Ramsey would agree with are lottery tickets. First things first, the odds of winning the lottery are like finding a needle in a haystack during a blizzard. Seriously, your chances of getting struck by lightning while riding a unicycle are probably higher. So instead of throwing away $200 a year, which is the average American spend, you should be saving that cash for something with a little bit more likely of a return. Now, if you're currently in the routine of buying lottery tickets, I get it. Playing the lottery can be addictive. It's like playing a never ending game of what if. You start dreaming of all the things you'll be able to do with that jackpot, but in reality, it's more likely to end up as a crumpled tick in your pocket. So sober up, realize they're a waste of money and start putting your cash to better use. Number 31, sales items. Dave Ramsey says, it's not what you make, it's what you keep. And one of the reasons people struggle to keep what they make is because of sales items. Sure, those big sales signs can make your heart skip a beat, but here's the deal. A sale doesn't automatically mean it's a great deal. Don't let the discounted price fool you into thinking you're saving money. If you didn't need it in the first place, it's still money out of your pocket. What Dave recommends is that you take a moment to ask yourself, do I really need this? Is this something that aligns with your goals or brings you genuine joy? If not, save your hard-earned cash for things that truly matter and don't let those flashy sales signs blind you from making wise spending choices. 